In this lecture, we will talk about experimental design. And as we briefly talked about in the previous lecture, the purpose of experiment is uh, to achieve high level of internal validity to have a uh, finding on the delay, causal relation between independent and dependent variable. And so we will talk about uh, how that can be achieved. So this slide has a recap of the meaning of internal validity of an experiment. So high internal validity means you have a high level of confidence that the effect that you observe in the dependent variable could be caused only by your manipulation of independent variable. So the key idea is your manipulation of independent variable by setting up experimental and control condition is different only with respect to independent variable. Okay, so uh, we will talk about how that can be achieved in the rest of the lecture. So the key idea here is even though experimental claims that there is one independent variable and the one dependent variable, that that means you manipulated only that independent variable, it's very difficult to ensure in the actual experimentation that the only change through two or more conditions, that means control condition and experimental condition, is the independent variable that you're claiming. So let's look at this example. In this case, let's say independent variable that you claim is the room temperature. And dependent variable is a test score. So this effect experiment is interested in the effect of room temperature on your test performance. However, because you have a lot of people with a different age group, a gender, intelligence, etc., uh, those are impinging upon and a potential effect on the dependent variable. So in order to maximize your internal validity, you have to remove, remove this age, gender, intelligence, which acts as something called extraneous variable. So the extraneous variable is still part of experiment but you want to remove its effect at the time of interpreting the results uh, by dependent variable. So how can you remove or control the effect of extraneous variable? There are two different kinds of approaches possible. Number one is actually measure and all the extraneous variables that you think to be contributing to the dependent variable then uh, you try to equate them across the conditions. But that's very difficult because you have to think about, you have to basically measure intelligence, height, whatever, all the different kinds of individual differences, and you have to actually match them across two or three, uh, two or more conditions. The other approach is to randomize the influence of extraneous variables. Randomize means you randomize it, so therefore, uh, based on the, uh, the law of large number, if you have a large enough subject, if you randomly assign the people into two conditions, uh, you assume that two conditions have approximately similar distribution of the people. Uh, so above uh, two different approaches to uh, achieve the control in experimental research. So the most uh, conventional or default design of experiment is uh, independent group design. So in this case, the participants are randomly assigned into condition A, which is an experimental condition, and a condition B, which is a control condition. So the difference between condition A and condition B is uh, your manipulation of independent and then you are going to measure its effect through a particular dependent variable, which is common across two conditions. Okay, and so this means you have to have two or more levels of between subject and condition, and then you are going to randomly assign all the people into condition A, B, and or C, right? And then you measure the dependent variable. So that's the basic operation. In this way, if you have a large enough subjects or participants you assume that people assigned to condition A and condition B are approximately similar. 
therefore removing uh, the extraneous variables associated with uh, individual differences. An alternative design is a repeated measure design. So in this case, uh, when you have a large amount of concern about uh, individual difference as uh, extraneous variables, you can actually uh, measure the people's performance across two different kinds of conditions in the repeated fashion. This means the same person experience all the relevant condition. This means experimental condition and control condition. So the basic design goes like, all the participants experience condition A, which is an experimental condition, let's say, and then you measure the dependent variable right after that. And then after that, you're going to expose the people into condition B, and that's going to be like either control condition or experimental condition, right? And then uh, you're going to measure uh, its effect. So the advantage in this design is uh, uh, it's actually easier to uh, find the statistical difference. Uh, you may recall the repeated measure design. You can use a much paired samples t-test, which has a larger power than independent samples t-test. And also, you do not have to worry about pre-existing difference due to individual differences, because the same person experiment experience condition A and condition B, the observed difference cannot be attributed to individual difference because the same person is going through two or more conditions. However, there is a big problem here. The big problem or disadvantage of this design is the order effects. That means Let's imagine that basically, even though you are giving the same measure as a dependent variable and after condition A and condition B, condition B after condition A is in a strict sense that's different from condition B that happens in the first, first, you know, first condition, the first phase. Uh, so the condition B is actually condition A plus condition B in a strict sense, whereas condition A is just a condition A. So it's a confound of the order. So this is called the order effect. And so here, uh, the advantage of repeated measure design is to control individual difference, but order effect is a part of situational difference. So therefore, uh, repeated measure design has a disadvantage in controlling uh, the situational effect as uh, extraneous variable. So I'm going to briefly summarize uh, the advantage and disadvantage of these two different kinds of designs that we just talked about. Uh, these existence of these designs arises from the need to control two different kinds of extraneous variables. Number one is individual differences, such as gender, age, intelligence, personality, cultural difference. These are the differences across individuals. And that's very difficult to control when you are using uh, independent groups design where two or more different groups receive different kinds of people. You try to equate it by random assignment, but that's not perfect. On the other hand, uh, the situational difference as a confound concerns the fact that uh, the, uh, there is an always some difference across different kinds of situations. So uh, this is more pronounced in repeated major design because the reason is uh, second condition after the first condition is different from if the second condition happened at the beginning. And we will talk about why, what, uh, why this happens in little more details in the next slide when we talk break down the nature of order effect. So number one. Order effect, uh, the summary of the order effect, the most important thing is order effect is uh, specific to when you use repeated major design. Okay? And there are two different kinds of order effect. Number one is a position effect. Position effect, definition of position effect is uh, the earlier position and then later position is produces different kinds of effect. That is the position effect. So, for example, uh, two typical position effects are uh, practice effect and fatigue effect. Practice effect 
according to the practice effect, the later uh, performance would improve because people get used to it as uh, they get uh, actually, uh, they experience, uh, they do more tasks, okay? Whereas the fatigue effect, uh, the people's performance decline to a later uh, when they get kind of fatigued and get tired of the task. On the other hand, the Kelly-Oba effect happens uh, due to the contrast or similarity between the first and the second or second and third. So it's dependent on adjacency or adjacency pair. Okay, so that's a little different from position effect. Okay, so for example, when uh, the ta adjacent tasks are so different and contradicting, performing the task A interfere with uh, the next task because you build the expectation based on the task A and you have to completely switch uh, the nature of the processing to adjust for the new task. That's an interference. So the interference is one type of carryover effect. The other kinds of carryover effect is a priming. Like when two adjacent tasks are related and similar, doing the first task is going to prepare you to uh, perform the second task. And one uh, example of uh, the Kelly-Oba effect that you already get, become should have familiarity is uh, the contrast and assimilation effect that you saw uh, in the context of survey. Remember that the contrast effect happened when the general question is placed before uh, the specific question, whereas the assimilation effect happened when the general question placed after the specific question. So uh, that depends on how the adjacency pairs are ordered. Therefore, that's a prototypical example of Kali-Oba effect. So how uh, in the repeated measure de design are you going to control Kali-Oba and or position effect? So in order to uh, fully control both Kali-Oba and uh, position effect, the best is to present the tasks or the condition in the all possible orders. Uh, so that's actually called counterbalancing or complete randomization of the presentation order. So this means if you have two groups, you need to have two different kinds of orders of presentation, A, B, and B, A. But if you have three groups, that you need uh, six different kinds of presentation order, like A, B, C, a, C, B, B, A, C, B, C, A, C, A, B, C, B, A. You see that, okay? So that gets really complicated. And uh, the reason why you need to do complete counterbalancing is because all you need to control not only position, but the, all the adjacency pair. So that's why you have to present uh, the task in all the conditions in all the possible orders. On the other hand, if sometimes if you have three different kinds of conditions but, but you don't want to and your concern is mostly uh, limited to position effect, you can use something called Latin square design uh, in which the each condition occurs at each original position once. So we will talk about that in the next slide as well. So here's a contrast between uh, full counterbalancing versus Latin square design. Think about three different kinds of conditions. Therefore, full counterbalancing requires three by two. That's six different kinds of patterns. If you have four different, I, I want you to think, if you have four different kinds of conditions, how many you would need. That's four by three by two. So that's 24 different kinds of uh, patterns are required. On the other hand, in the Latin square design, uh, with the three different kinds of conditions, all you need is A, B, C, C, A, B, and B, C, A. So B always happens after A, C always happens after B, but A happens in the first position once, first, second position once, and third position once. So therefore, the position effects are controlled in Latin square design, but uh, Kali-Oba effects are not, uh, effect is not controlled in uh, the Latin square design. So in order to control both, you have to have a uh, full counterbalancing. So 
uh, which of independent groups and repeated measure designs are better. So let's think about it. Independent group design, individual differences controlled by randomizing because of random assignment. Situational difference is controlled by matching because the reason is it's complete. Uh, you can you can simultaneously uh, test two groups of people, so situational differences are completely controlled. On the other hand, in the repeated measure design, individual difference is controlled by matching because the same person. But on the other hand, situational difference is controlled by randomizing. Full counterbalancing is the prototypical uh, of complete randomizing, whereas Latin square design randomize only the position. But you see that we talked about two different kinds of philosophical approach, matching versus randomizing. So in this independent group and repeated measure design, matching and randomizing is applied for all either situational difference or individual difference, person person's difference, uh, respectively. Finally, uh, when you expect to have only small number of subjects, uh, random assignments are not expected to produce equal or uh, similar group of people across two or more conditions. In that case, uh, there is one uh, design called the matched pair design experiment, which is an alternative to independent group design. Uh, in this case, you are going to pretest participants with relevant measures, such as, for example, if your experiment or research question concerns uh, dependent variables uh, that may possibly be affected by specific individual difference, such as intelligence, you are going to perform the pretest of intelligence to all the participants. And then you try to actually match the people. So the people who are similar, you're going to form the pair, are the people, two people who are similar in the intelligence level, and then they are going to be assigned into condition A and condition B. So in that way, you actually manually try to ensure similarity between uh, the people assigned to condition A and condition B, rather than relying on the random assignment. This, this works, uh, uh, this is the good alternative when the number of subjects uh, participants are small, uh, because uh, when participants are small, uh, Landa's assignment uh, is not going to produce similar distribution of the people across uh, two or more conditions. Basically, the conclusion and a summary. So remember that the experimental design, namely, you are introduced to three different kinds of designs, uh, independent groups design, and repeated measure design, and matched uh, pairs design. These three designs exist to control extraneous variables. And then you need to be concerned, the most concerned extraneous variables can be different depending on your research question, such as is it a situation, such as order, or individual difference, and what's the expected number of participants that you can recruit into the, uh, your experiment. So these concerns would dictate which of these designs that you should actually use. And because uh, your purpose is to maximize the internal validity by uh, uh, maximizing the experimental control. So this, the final slide, I'm basically repeating the same thing that I just said in the previous slide. Choice of using between subject or within subject design should be based on question of whether situational or individual difference are the biggest concern of your extraneous variable that threaten your internal variability or internal, vari in, I'm sorry, internal validity of your experiment.